Hello friends, today we're going to be learning about a very powerful and relatively new weapon against the Slav opening from White's point of view. There are many, many different lines and setups that Black can choose in our opening and they haven't been analyzed as well. For example, if you got uh, books that are written based on the Slav opening, it's quite rare for the author to be including our variation, which means that it's still obscure in 2021. And I believe uh, if at the very, very top level, they have most of the lines analyzed at your level, I say almost no chance that your opponents will be familiar with what I'm going to introduce you with today. So it starts off with uh, white playing d4, d5, c4, c6. And don't worry, we're not going to be playing those boring exchange slabs. Instead, we're going to be learning about this move bishop to g5. At first, maybe the move even may look stupid. What's its purpose? Well, every opening or every opening variation that I'm trying to play with white, I'm trying to understand what kind of concrete problems am I posing on my opponent. If I'm not creating any problems, that opening is not for me. And bishop on g5 is simply pinning the pawn uh, on e file, and this doesn't allow them to develop their dark square bishop in the usual way, which would be like to e7, d6, or b4, before they do something about that pin. And there are lots of ways how black can actually try and attempt to solve those problems, and sometimes those positions can lead to very, very sharp, chaotic, like World War II type positions. Whereas in other positions, in other variations, we're going to choose just to go for a solid but stable positional plus with very calm play. So in a way, it's going to depend on how black is going to play. Now we're going to look at a couple of lines. There are too many lines to cover uh, them all in one video. And I would like to start with the move queen to b6. So this just tries to forcefully and pin uh, the pawn and now black would be ready to develop the king side in a normal way uh, This also targets the pawn on b2, which is a relatively common idea when the bishop comes out of white say in the London system another popular opening This queen to b6 is also a very common idea now we're going to be going for knight to c3. We're simply counterattacking the pawn on d5. And for us, the most important thing is that they cannot take the pawn on b2. This leads to a winning position for white. So we're going to go knight takes d5. And already black is not understanding how to defend against the threat of knight c7 and a4. Of course, if, if they move the, the, the king, then we have a huge positional plus, which is going to lead the winning position anyway. Sometimes in these positions, what you can remember is that white likes to include the move rook to b1 to kick the queen away, for example, to a2 or a3 square, and then actually go knight to c7. So in this position, I guess the only uh, move that your opponents will try is going to be knight to a6, defending c7 square, and white goes e4 with too many threats. Uh, one threat is simply to take the knight on a6 with the bishop with a subsequent fork on c7. And another threat is to play rook to b1, which would move the queen away from the b file. And this would allow our bishop to come to this b5 square when after they block the check and we take and king takes, their king ends up in the middle of the board. The best try for black maybe is to play e6. White can launch and in between move rook to b1 say queen takes a2 and now after bishop to b5 check bishop d7 there are many ways to to, to to win the game perhaps the simplest would be just rook a1 queen to b2 seems to be the only move and then takes takes and black's king uh, doesn't run away from the center there are simply too many pieces that are gonna hunt it down and black is uh, inevitably losing the game over here. If you don't like this line, let me quickly just show an alternative. Here we could also take on d7, then play rook takes b7, and for example, after rook f7, again, there are too many threats. If they take the knight, we can always take back on f8, and queen c1 is another line. Uh, I think that over the board, uh, you would find one of these winning continuation as there are so many of them here. So 
we're not afraid of queen b6 right away and then grabbing the pawn and um, grandmasters over the board and also most of the players online i checked the databases play e6 and when they play e6 in this variation we have a static plus we have a positional advantage that is long lasting of them having this very bad piece there is simply no way for them to solve the problem of this bad light square bishop and so we call it a statically bad piece in other words it's a bad piece in quite a, a long run and after a move queen to d2 which would just defend the pawn on uh, b2 white can simply follow it up with very natural development like bishop to d3 knight to f3 castle sometimes it may be even knight e2 rook to c1 and we can always point with the finger on the board and say ha you have that bad bishop so i am uh, better perhaps the most fun line uh, that black can choose is actually to include h6 and after bishop h4 then play queen to b6 that's very 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 chaotic line let it be the last line we're gonna look at today and I think that the most natural move and most of the players are going to play knight to c6 they're for now ignoring their problems uh, pressing d4 pawn and we're going to also play the move knight to c3 well we're attempting with this move to to press d5 which would uh, attempt for them not to allow to develop the queen as seemingly the pawn is hanging although in reality actually they can still play the move queen to b6 they're of course counter-attacking b2 now here already we cannot play knight takes d5 because after queen a5 not only the knight is under attack but also the bishop behind it black is winning the piece and the game so our move is going to be there is more than one move but i like e4 if we're uh, playing something that is um, not as analyzed let's go for the sharp sharp lines so we're playing e4 and our very basic idea is that if they take on e4 we're gonna be playing d5 and now there could be some bishop b5 checks in some cases like for example if they go knight to b4 bishop b5 bishop d7 and of course here already uh I don't have to be genius to understand that white is better when black's king is 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 so misplaced and it leads to hard positions for black in a practical sense because white is not risking much on the other hand uh if black makes a mistake white can capitalize on all sort of as i mentioned bishop knight b5s knight c7s or bishop b5 checks so for example we could try bishop e3 allow them to take the poison pawn and then after knight b5 already black screams mamma mia what to do so again very very hard i believe to be playing black but not saying that white cannot lose the game as well then after e4 uh, the most typical move here at least online is played e6 and then we simply have takes on d5 takes on d5 and the move bishop to b5 so if what's the idea if they play a6 now we're ready to take on d5 with again a beautiful tactical motive that is very popular if they take the bishop we have knight to c7 fork and white wins the game so after bishop to b5 in the game um, grandmasters are either choosing bishop to b4 or bishop e6 although there are only two games so uh, two moves to play and white I guess also has a comfortable game um, after queen e4 easy development um, white is not risking much we have almost symmetrical position and objectively we have a small position of plus or small advantage for white now queen b6 is probably um, what uh, more experienced players would attempt to do that's a typical idea and as I mentioned in many openings where white develops their dark square bishop outside let's take a look at alternatives uh, what else can they be playing um, knight f6 i believe would be a typical choice of an amateur or one of the typical choices after which we have to give up the bishop pair uh, but for a very good reason uh, most of the students that i teach this opening to play uh, they're actually playing this line from white's point of view as black is the one uh, black is the one that chooses this line uh, as their most popular choice here if they take with the e pawn 
then the D5 pawn becomes isolated and white has very comfortable and easy way of, of playing the game here. Um, for example, E3, bishop to B4 is most popular choice. There are alternatives, say knight to E2, ready to take back with the knight. Although, of course, we would love to put the knight on F4 and later maybe press in various ways this isolated pawn on D5. For example, rook to C1, now also once the knight moves, we're ready to take back with the rook. Not that it's a disaster, of course, to take with the pawn. For example, bishop e6, knight to f4, rook c8. And white has not a huge advantage, but a very comfortable position to play. And I would say that in a practical game, white is much better, um, between slightly better and uh, much better. If uh, they take with the G pawn, uh, which is the grandmaster's choice, um, white also has a very comfortable development in a similar fashion, bishop d3. And um, I think that Dorfman, one of the best coaches of all time, would be very proud of how players are playing now because according to his strategy, when black has the bishop pair, uh, black should put... Uh, or rather defend the squares that um, opponent's bishop color is off. So in this case, because white has the light square bishop, black should be attempting to defend the light squares. That doesn't mean that black should be like psycho and put all the pawns on the light squares, but it, it this move f5 and this whole sol solid white structure, of course, doesn't allow white to create the counterplay along the light squares right away. And the reason why they want to defend those squares is simply because white has three minor pieces that could attack any given light square on the board, whereas black has only two, the light square and the knight. And on the other hand, black, of course, will be attacking and conducting play on the dark color squares. That's why black chose to make this bishop into a very good one. As you can see, it's active and pawns are not restricting it. And their bad bishop is the one that is the same color as the white. So white, on the other hand, wants to defend the dark squares. And Giri, for example, one of the best players in the world here, played g3 for this reason. White defends the dark squares, attack the light squares, whereas black defends the light squares and attack the dark squares. That's not related just to this opening, but any position with the bishop pair. And we can just observe a couple of developing moves here. White was slightly better in uh, Tata Steel Tournament of the last year, where Giri played against Jordan Van Forest. Also, I think quite a comfortable position to play, although black might try to bite something out yeah, with uh, the semi-open G file and something, but in reality, white is objectively totally fine. Uh, another interesting attempt that uh, they're trying, and this is also not very good, is just to play H6 and G5 to solve the problem of this spin. So for example, Bishop H4, G5, now Bishop G3. And here I have an idea that works against amateurs very well. We're just like, doesn't matter really how exactly black is developing. They could have played bishop f5. We could even swap the light square bishops as white. No problem there. But I like to play the move h4. And I tease them to play g4. Of course, taking is just disastrous. My, my attack on the uh, king side with the rook involvement is going to be too strong. So they usually push to try to close it, but they're giving up the square. And so now I can play knight e2, knight f4. And here I would say that practically black is lost, although objectively maybe it's only much better for white, maybe not decisive yet. But look at the white's pieces. I mean, this is just amazing. I could even maybe think of playing h5 and bishop h4 in the future. Also improving the dark square bishop and then, yeah, it's scary for, for black. Uh, another attempt that is um, rare, but actually quite good, is black and play f6. Uh, rarely do people are, are gonna play this move because it takes away the square, uh, but Sokolov, one of the also amazing players uh, in the world, actually lost one game here in a similar position against this idea of uh, knight h6. and. Uh, very simple idea, trying to win the bishop pair on the on the king side there. For example, if we play a move like e3, knight to f5, and uh, black could actually develop scary initiative and even be better in these positions. And not to say that uh, we cannot play bishop h4, but I recommend the move bishop d2 here. It feels 
it feels at first very stupid as um, we're simply uh, sacrificing the pawn on d4 and uh, not clear how can we win it back. But uh, wait a minute, if they play knight takes d4, here we have a move e3. Um, if they go back knight to c6, we have queen to h5. We're doubling atta attacking the king and the pawn. And after we win this pawn back, here, these pawns are restricting black's development quite a bit, and for this reason, uh, white is simply much uh, better. They could also go back knight f5. Now this check on h5 doesn't attack the pawn, but here we can play bishop d3, e5 is the best move, and after knight g to e2, this is a good position for black. Objectively, this is equal, but... Um, there is an imbalance and someone might win this game, actually. I bet this is not uh, a draw with position at all. Black has pawn center and one pawn up, while white has huge lead in development. We have four pieces developed, black has only one. So I, after f6, would be tempted to go for, for these lines myself. And now the most fun line, uh, video is of course taking long, and um, I'm going to add timestamps so that you could just only look the lines that you're most interested in. But let's take a look at that crazy line where black starts with h6 and then plays queen to b6. I loved analyzing this. Um, and the, the positions are going to get so messy that it's going to remind us of like maybe the Tal games, for example. Um, so we are going to play knight to c3. Now black takes the pawn on b2. Again, we know that if e6, that bishop is very bad. We could play a move like queen d2, and we have always a static position or long-term plus. Queen takes b2. Now, knight takes d5, and it seems like, okay, we're threatening this fork again. If knight a6, maybe e 4 and we're um, in a very good shape. But they have this move e6, and don't rush with knight c7 because it actually loses the game. Because... This move prepares bishop to b4 check, and once it lands there on b4, the only piece that can block is actually the queen. So if knight to c7, for example, king d7, this is very, very bad for white. For example, knight a8, bishop b4, and it's black that is winning the game. So after e6, our knight is, of course, hit. White plays rook to b1. They're trying to win the control over b4. Now, black has to understand this as well. If queen to a2, then we can play knight c7, and they don't have that bishop b4 check. However, they could play queen a3. Now, after knight c7, once again, they will be able to land the check on b4. So, of course, we can sacrifice the exchange. It, it gets very sharp, but if I'm correct, there is at least a forced draw here, right? Perpetual check. All right. So after queen a3, there are many ways how white could play. Queen c2 is the most fun one. So we're attacking c8 and in a way also might be supporting c7. So they cannot take on d5 because once that bishop drops, it's uh, checkmate actually. So they play queen to a5. And now if you just want already it's a <laughs> some peaceful times over the board, you could just play queen to c3. So take stakes and we have objectively equal endgame, but white leads the development, right? Um, black has this outside pass pawn opportunities in the very, very long future. I like white here and you may be tempting to go for this, but if you're already analyzing these lines and you want to win games based on your preparation, King D1 is the way to go. It leaves black with a lot of threats. And um, here the only move is knight to a6. It defends against both threats. Now knight is defending c7, and the rook is also guarding the, the c8 square. Now e4, this, this prepares bishop to b5 check. e takes d5. Only move, uh, these are only moves actually for black. Anything else will end up very, very badly. Once again, we want to take on c7, a6, and just play knight to c7 check. e takes d5, bishop to b5. 
Now they're forced to also leave their king in the center. Rook to b7. Knight c7 only move. Bishop g3. And you're continuously giving black to only moves to make. And uh, I don't believe that it's possible to do that, to be honest. For example, if rook c8, now knight f3. And as you can see, uh, white is the only one that is developing the initiative. For example, if f6 then takes on d5 with multiple threats. If bishop to d6, then we can give up this pawn with the tempo just to get this knight e5. And once again, uh, white is winning the game. So instead of rook c8, black is forced to play the move bishop to d6. For example, e5, queen a6 again only move because if bishop moves, once again, we can play, for example, say bishop to f8 and e6. And the beast has been awakened. So they have to counterattack the rook. And for example, takes on d6 and this crazy, crazy line that um, goes on for a little longer, but uh, only here Black can find himself in equality. So I hope to inspire that uh, there are still new ideas in the in the Slav, not completely new, but at least obscure and not analyzed as much, not at least among uh, non-elite level players. Uh, we could end up in positional chess here. We could end up in very, very dynamic chess. Um, I think that Another good thing about this opening is also that very early on uh, do you force your opponent into your territory. For example, here, it's on move 2 or, or on move 4 already, they, they might be out of book. If you're preparing idea somewhere on move 10, 12, 13, there is a high chance that they could avoid uh, and uh, the main line and force you to play something that they prepared, something new in on move 4, 5, 6, 7, etc, etc. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to my chess channel. Uh, let me know in the comments if timestamps help to, to guide yourselves in these longer format videos. If you would like to consider me as your online personal coach, contacts are on the right. That's my full-time job for already a decade. Uh, thank you for watching. Stay safe and uh, continue loving the game. Bye-bye.